Hi you guys doing out there, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Crystal H Technology Projection Screens using Smart Technology Gain. And I uh, just wanted to add something in really quick. Alright, so this is just really fast, fast, just just talk, that's basically about it. Gamer to gamer, you guys know that I'm a huge gamer besides screen painting, and projection screens, blackout cloth. I am a huge freaking gamer, I love to freaking game. Alright, so um, what I wanted to talk about here is, um, I was looking at uh, um, some uh, videos on YouTube, you know, somebody's YouTube channel, and they were talking about the uh, Xbox Scorpion, and I guess it's the, I don't know, the Neo, I'm not sure what they're calling it, the new PS5 or whatever they're going to be calling it, but basically we're talking about these next-gen consoles and how they're coming very close to PCs. Well, let's just say not to a PC, but a low entry level PC, maybe, I'm not sure, maybe not, I don't know. But just, just say, just put it this way, in their terms, they, they think they're coming close to PC. Uh, not to put anyone down, I know a few people are going to be upset about basically when I said not coming too close to PC, because if you knew the power of what a PC could do, um, you'd really think twice about making that comment that a console would ever be equal to a PC. That will never, ever happen. All right, so, not to go all PC master race on you guys, it's just that I personally used to be console. I was console when a lot of you guys weren't even born yet. I played gaming systems that you guys never even freaking heard of. I played a game system called the FM Marty. You gotta look that one up. Um, I had the um, Scotty, uh, the Pippin, I think it's the Pippin. It was a, a, a console that basically had a Macintosh motherboard in it. I've had the Neo Geo. Man, if you guys ever complained about video games being expensive, have you ever had the liberty of actually owning a Neo Geo? I lied to you not. The first time I saw this thing, I thought it was a typo. Um, they had it at Toys R Us, and I'm sorry, Kitty City, Kitty City, way back in the day. They had it at Kitty City. It was $999, and the cartridges were anywhere from $200 to $300 to $400, some even $500, a cartridge, a cartridge, a cartridge. I lie to you not, and people want to complain about $60 for a game, you just don't know. Um, N64 games were $60, $70, $80 from the door. I mean, if you got a game for $60, used was $50, used was $40, I lied to you not. Um, I had the Virtual Boy, and of course Dreamcast and 3DO, and yeah, I went through the era of the, um, the ColecoVision and Atari and all those other systems, and even Pong, I've even had Pong. Uh, basically from, uh, I said back, well, I had Pong on the Tani, on a Tani um, uh, gaming console that you hooked up to your UHF on the back of your TV and you switched over to Channel 3. And this is when Tani Corporation, way before they became Radio Shack. So when I mean, I'm a long time console gamer, I mean it. Alright, so let's go tippy toe over here to my, let me move this stuff out of the way real quick. Just some of this stuff I'm going to show you really quick because you'll have some people like, well, you know, you can't back it up who you are. This is a Sega Genesis with a Sega CD. I lie to you not. This is how you complain about the size of the Xbox One. Look at the size of this thing. And mind you, there was a 32X adapter that connected on the top of this. So you had the CD-ROM at the bottom, you had the cartridge at the top, and there was a giant huge piece that went on the top of it, which was the 32X. And you complain about the size of your Xbox. All right. So, and then over here, here's the original gigantic Xbox um, with the, I showed this before, massive uh, controller, a gauntlet controller, because you can literally stick that into a pillowcase and kill a man with it. So basically, you know, a lot of people want to um, compare uh, consoles to PCs, and it just can't be done. I'm telling you right now, look, it seriously can't be done. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, you're all PC Master Race and so and so. No, I'm not actually. I, I do love PCs. I got into PCs right around the time uh, near the end of the Xbox 360. And um, what I saw, what these uh, consoles had the offer, the next gen consoles had the offer, they were claiming they're going to have 4K and all this other cool stuff that they can do. And uh, I knew automatically from the door that it was going to be problems. So. I went to PC and I haven't looked back. I love freaking PC. I love it. Now, this is for those of you. This is very important. This is for those of you who constantly have a habit of saying, well, look, and you can feel Spencer made this comment. Well, look, if you own a, uh, um, if you own a uh, uh, PC, you will, be you will be confined to a desk 
and a keyboard. So your desk and keyboard, you can't sit on your couch and basically enjoy your um, your PC. Now, let me show you something really here, really close here. I'm on Steam, this is my Steam account right here. And here it is, it says Steam from your couch. Now look at this. I can use, there's a program on here, actually there's an option on here, let's say like a little controller, that will allow me to be able to use Steam Big Picture Mode. And those of you who don't know what Steam Big, Big Picture Mode is, it's basically a, um, a, uh, a little mode on here, an option on here that you can click and I can actually use my Xbox 360 controller, which I love my Xbox 360 controller. I do have an Xbox One downstairs, that's my wife's uh, Xbox One. And yes, I can use wireless controllers on here. I can use my um, uh, old Nintendo and cartridge, sorry, Nintendo um, uh, uh, controllers on here. I can use uh, my light guns, anything. Anything I want to use, I can basically have them adapt to my PC so I can play. So I can use any controller, any kind of hardware I want. Uh, another thing I love about PC is it's it, we don't have to go through the backwards compatibility. Everything is compatible with PC. If I want, I can load tons of emulators of all the old games I played way back in the day, and I can play them on my PC. And the beautiful thing about this is, is if I have a 4K or 1080p TV or 4K projector or 1080p projector, I can play that on my um, on my Steam. I can play it on my computer. So my computer right here can link to my TV with no problem. Now the problem you have here is you have a lot of people saying, well, you guys are stuck to a mouse and keyboard. Now look what it says here. It says right here, I'm just crystal clear so you guys can see this right here. We can available on your television from the comfort of your couch. See, your library of games, your friends, your favorite mods, which means another thing I love about PC is the fact that we could VOD the crap out of our games and not get banned. You try this on Xbox Live, and trust me, I have done it when I had the 360. I modded the crap out of that thing, and basically, I got banned left and right. I got banned for gamer tags, I got banned for hardware modification, and I got banned for basically modding games. So, uh, that was another thing, too. And on top of that, we can use uh, you can use a Steam controller or your favorite controller, old controller, which means I can hook up my NES controllers or my N64 controllers, or your mouse or keyboard, which means we have wireless keyboard and mouse. I even have a keyboard. It actually has the whole entire controller keyboard, and I can control the uh, movements with one hand. So we have the best of both worlds. And see. What gets me is when I see these consoles coming out and they say, oh, we have Twitter and we have um, we have Netflix and we have Hulu and we have Facebook. We, we've been had this. We had this already. This is PC. We already had this already. My online, I don't pay anything for online. So there's no Xbox Live subscription. There's no PS4 uh, Gold or whatever it is you guys pay for. There's none of that on there. And the best thing about it is while you're standing in line waiting to get the next console that's supposed to have so-called specs that were supposed to be on the previous system that are now on this system, I'll be sitting home playing my game system, having a ball. So I'm not basically trying to put anybody down. I'm just trying to get you to think a little bit here. When you consider the fact as long as I've been playing games, I've been playing games since Vector Graphics and Pong. And to tell you the truth, from every console I've ever seen, it feels like I've been playing a prototype. It's like I've been playing, like I'm a test subject or an unpaid test subject where I've just been testing out their hardware and just buying tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of their hardware and games. Now, for anyone who sits there and says, well, guess what? The reason why I do consoles is because um, it's less expensive. No, 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 no. Now, see, in the beginning, a PC is very costly. It can be costly, it cannot be costly, depending on what kind of hardware you put into it. But it's an investment. So it's an investment for years to come. Because when you basically pay for a PC, pretty much you don't really have to update a lot of stuff. I mean, to tell you the truth, pretty much your hardware is pretty much years in advance. So you're pretty much good from there. Now, with console, just think about it. This is what you're going to go through. New console comes out, they're not going to make that many of them. You start pre-ordering them. Your pre Next you know, the pre-orders turn into shortages because they don't have enough to fill the pre-orders. This happens every single time if you're lucky to get one. Then you have to go through all the freaking uh, uh, problems that the first prototypes come out with. They have all kinds of problems where they break down. They have all kinds of error messages and all kinds of crap that goes on between that nonsense. So you have to pretty much weed through all that nonsense if you're lucky to get one that works. And then basically for those of you who did not pre-order, will have to go through the crap on eBay or Amazon or any of these places that are going to charge you a freaking car payment for a freaking uh, console. Now meanwhile, you're going to find out later on 
that the old console that you purchased that cost you maybe three, four, five hundred dollars, or those of you who are basically one of the eBay bidding, paid a couple of thousand dollars for your console, you'll find out later on that when the new console comes out, you'll repeat the exact same process over and over and over again. You'll basically, let's put it this way, and a fast way of putting this, go back and take a calculator and add up all the games that you have. Add up all the, the, the games that you own on your system, and I guarantee you, you've already bought a PC. Now with me, I have one PC here. My PC is more powerful than the Scorpion or whatever system, whatever it's called. It's more powerful than the um, the uh, PS uh, PS5 or whatever you're going to call that. I'm not sure. And the new Nintendo, whatever that's going to be. And the bottom line is, I just had to build it one time. That's it. So you'll go out and you'll spend what, five hundred, four hundred dollars a console. So three sixty was probably about four or five. And then the new Xbox One is about $500. And then this new system will probably cost you around six. So pretty much you've already bought a PC right there. And then when you consider the fact that how many games you bought per each system, including hardware and Xbox and subscription costs to play online, you bought a PC. You bought a PC. That's what you bought. So technically, what you're using right now, what you're, what you're buying and what you have is a prototype. Because if it wasn't a prototype, they would have had it right the first time, and you wouldn't have to keep rebuying it over and over again. See, my PC right here is not a prototype. I built it, I designed it, I know exactly the parts that I have in it, and I'm done. I don't have to buy one for a long time. Not for a long time. So that's what I'm trying to tell you right now. You're basically investing in a prototype, and then there'll be a new one coming out, and then there'll be a new one coming out, and then there'll be a new one coming out, and then there'll be a new one coming out. Kind of get what I'm talking about, don't you? All right, so that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to go all PC master apes on you guys. I'm not trying to go all crazy berserk on you guys by saying my system is more inferior than all of you. Ah, oh. no, no, no. Just trying to talk to gamers, to other gamers, just for you all guys to understand that basically you're paying for prototypes when it comes to console. That's what you're paying for. And I'll tell you something right now. Seriously, if consoles are ever going to evolve into PCs, they cannot put those P those, those consoles, you can't take a powerful PC like this and stick it in a com com compact uh, casing because it will overheat and it will burn out. PCs generate a ton of heat, especially if you're using certain processors, they generate a ton of freaking heat. So I don't know, if these, just, if these consoles pretty much evolve into PCs, man, these are going to be some big, bulky-looking consoles. <laughs> I love you not. Some of them may have wheels. I'll tell you the truth, they may have wheels. All right, well, that's basically about it, man. I like talking to you guys about gaming. I'm a big gamer myself. I enjoy spending a little time with you guys and a little bit about my history on gaming and so forth. Hope you guys all have a good one and not to put consoles down. Like I said, if you can't build a PC, you know, I mean, there, there's PCs out there that are really reasonable, man. You can get PCs for like four and five hundred dollars for the same amount of money that you pay for these new um, so-called prototype consoles. You can actually go out and buy a PC. So it's it's worth the investment. You either do it right the first time, or you just keep repeating the same nonsense over and over again. All right, you guys, all have a good one.